The badges to South Africa. It says, greetings from the USA. The badges were supposed to be back on the field a while ago, but because of COVID, they've kind of been held over here. It says, in spite of the changes, there's good news from a far country. I was intending to send this letter from South Africa, but we have adjusted our schedule. Because there's been a spike in our area of the virus, renewed lockdowns and civil unrest, we have been, able, we have been made our departure plans for mid-September, which is right about now. The churches have been on lockdown for four weeks, but Impendulo has managed to minister to our two Lagote Baptist Church families at two funerals. Pastor Sam Melissa was a great help to him for this, and our folks are always encouraged by his presence and staying faithful to the Lord and his people in our absence. Please pray for his continued studies and spiritual growth as his ministry increases. Shrey Yan Yan continues to disciple the youth over the phone with weekly appointments lasting one hour each. Please pray for her as she plans her first fur furlough and for her application for a work permit. Before the last lockdown, Brother Mike Nielsen and his wife Mandy came and served in each of the churches. He also spent a lot of time with ANSWER, training in evangelism and pastoral theology. We are thankful for their part in our church and our part in their ministry as one of our missionaries. One White River Baptist Church, or see, our White River Baptist Church services have been difficult as our members catch up with technology and I catch up with learning this means of ministry. You know, we, we forget that our missionaries are on lockdown, but they don't have, a lot of places don't have the Wi-Fi and the internet and the ease that we do here, so, um, and it's a lot of new technology for some of our missionaries who've got gray hair. Um, I am trying to maximize the use of our time to schedule some meetings to replace some lost support and to help with projects specifically at the Lagote Baptist Church. Would you pray with us and for this need? Last month, we received a generous gift enabling us to dig a clean water well at the church site. This is a great blessing. Would you pray with us that, we, that the well digger will hit a great spot with a generous yield of water? On our return, our efforts to further secure the property via buildings, gates, finishing the walls, bathrooms, and septic system will be a first order of the physical work. This is a part I like here. In our absence, some 22 souls have received Christ, and the churches are growing spiritually through the challenges they are facing. Praise the Lord that his word is still going out and accomplishing his purposes. Your service to South Africa, for Jesus' sake, Richard and Laura Badgett. Let's just remember the Badgett's in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we're just thankful for the work that goes on there in South Africa, even though our missionaries are still in the States here. Your hand still goes about, Lord, in your churches there that you've started. I just pray for those that are picking up the ministry, that they will continue on there and that they will be faithful, and the people of the churches will be faithful, living out their Christian walk, but also sharing the gospel. I just thank you for these 22 souls that have been saved. just pray that they would grow and mature in you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this gift, for a well to be dug there. I just pray that it would spring up fresh water, but Lord, that the ministry would go forth with the living water and would, that many souls would be saved there. Uh, Lord, just uh, thankful for each dollar that, that comes in, Lord, and just thankful for the faith promise that folks have been faithful with here, Lord, that the ministry may go out and that souls will be saved and the missionaries can stay on the field. Lord, just pray that the, the COVID restrictions there would be lifted and your word would go out freely. Just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus Since I found in Him a friend so strong and true I would tell you how He changed my life completely He did something that no other friend could do no one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cares for me. All my life was full of sin when Jesus found me. 
All my heart was full of misery and woe. Jesus placed his loving arms around me, and he led me in the way I ought to go. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cares for me. Every day he comes to me with new assurance. More and more I understand his words of love. But I'll never know just why he came to save me. Till someday I see his blessed face above. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cares for me. Uh, take your Bibles this morning. Turn to Matthew chapter 9. Hold your place there. Turn to John chapter 4. Matthew chapter 9, and then John chapter 4. Matthew chapter 9, John chapter 4. We'll be in John chapter 4 first. <clears throat> John chapter 4, look down at verse 35. And the Bible says, Say not ye, there are yet four months, then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. I think about the theme of our missions conference, and it's the title of my message this morning, The Hour is Late and the Need is Great. Say not ye, the Lord said, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. No, that's not so. Lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. The harvest is now. Uh, on Sunday nights, I've been preaching a series of message, messages on end time events. And some of the things that we've looked at, Daniel talks about at the end time, men will run to and fro. Uh, the ability for transportation, uh, it, it, it's just... It has exploded. I was looking at the last month, they were talking about this supersonic jet that they built. And uh, you can go from here to Europe within the matter of an hour or so. Uh, folks, that is just unbelievable. Uh, it all, Daniel chapter 12 also, also talks about the knowledge explosion. Uh, uh, the knowledge shall be increased. And and the ability to have knowledge today. I, I mean, just, you can, you can take this little thing right here, this little telephone, and, 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 and I've, I've got more capability in this, in this right here than I have on the computer on my desk. Just unbelievable, the knowledge is that just at your fingertips. And it just takes a, just, just a second, and you can pull it up. You find anything you want to know. 
Things that you shouldn't need to know. The end time, Daniel says, knowledge will be increased. Uh, Psalms chapter 2 talks about a, a worldwide rebellion against God. And, and folks, we see that like never before. Uh, uh, this planet that we live on, rebellion against God is all over the place. Uh, there's, there's willful skepticism today. Uh, I'm just going through some of the highlights of some of the things I've preached on Sunday night. But the Lord said, say not ye there yet four months. No, it's on us, folks. It's here. We look at this clock back here, and we're going to refer, refer to it many times uh, going into our missions clock, uh, conference. And, and just the very thought that Alan gave to me on his thought of it, all the time that's passed, it's gone. We'll never get it back. And how close are we to that 12th hour? And, uh, and, and for, I, I'm not standing here today setting dates. I'd be a fool to do that. But one thing I do know, we're closer to it right now than when you showed up here this morning. Time is moving on. Uh, and a willful skepticism of uh, where's the promise of His coming. For 2,000 years, you preachers have been saying, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. Well, folks, He's coming. People are willfully ignorant. It's not that you can't know, it's that you won't know. I mean, the gospel is there today. We talked about technology. Oh, in that same little phone, uh, uh, Tim talked about in Sunday school pulling up uh, some uh, pastor down in Florida and talked about some of the things that, that he was teaching and you know, and I, I think that's the way it is in Florida today. I don't, I don't think anybody ought to go to Florida. <laughs> but don't say there are four months and then come at the harvest. No, the harvest is here, folks. And I think we're standing at the door. The peace movement today in First Thessalonians, for when they should say peace, peace, and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail uh, upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Uh, oh, listen, folks, the, the world is clamoring for peace today. Hey, if we could just solve global warming, there'd be peace on the earth. If you believe that, I got a bridge I'd like to sell you. Matter of fact, there's a river right down here I'd like to, I'd sell you that, but anyway. Uh, so so uh, just an explosion of apostasy today. Oh, just, just look, folks, at the churches that are changing, churches that are closing. Uh, I, I tell you, I look at some of the stuff out there today and I don't recognize it. I don't reckon, I don't know what it is, but evil men and seducers shall act worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. For the time will come when they'll not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned. Oh, listen, the danger, folks, in turning your ears away from the truth. God says, when you do that, I will turn you. And that's a dangerous thing. But we see all these things that are happening. How close are we to the return of the Lord? I believe we're close. The hour is late. The need is great. So many other things that we see in our world today. The homosexual movement today that is just uh, unprecedented. It's out there. It's before us. Everywhere you go. Everywhere you look. Governmental surveillance today. I, this sound familiar to you. Revelation chapter 13 talks about, and that no man might buy or sell, say that they had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now listen to me, folks. I don't believe COVID, I don't believe vaccinations have anything to do with the mark of the beast. But I'm telling you what, it's, it's programming us for it when it comes. 
Oh, you're hearing now, you're not going to be able to do things if you don't have your vaccination card. You're not going to be able to fly. You're not going to be able to travel. You're not going to be able to go to your sporting events. Oh, listen, what, what a reason to go get your vaccination so I can go to the Buffalo Bills game today. Or any other game as far. Uh, just a, a programming of that very thing. Israel is back in the land uh, in time apostasy. So, folks, the, the, say not ye that there are four months, then cometh the harvest. No, folks, lift up your eyes and look. Lift up your eyes. Look up. It's here. The hour's late. And the need is still great. Don't say there are four months, and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your head. Lift up your eyes. Look on the fields, for they're white already unto harvest. I thought as I was reading this, I'm just giving you some introduction to what I want to say today. But I thought about that. Folks, when's the last time we, we lifted up our eyes and looked on the fields? No, I, I mean, lift up your eyes and actually look. Look at your neighbors. Uh, look at the people that you stand next to at the grocery store. When you, <clears throat> when you fill up your car with gas or, or wherever you go. We're talking about missions Folks, missions are everywhere. We are all missionaries in a sense. Lift up your eyes and look with an understanding that the hour is late and the need is great. An understanding that, that, that the souls of men and women and boys and girls stand in the balance. The fields are white already under harvest. Okay, go from there to Matthew chapter 9. <clears throat> and here's where I want to spend the bulk of my time this morning. Look down at verse 36. Having said what we looked at in John chapter 4, verse 36 of Matthew chapter 9. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. Because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd... Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. You know, folks, for probably 37 years, I've been attending missions conferences. I can't tell you how many times I've heard this passage referenced in a missions conference and so what i'm going to say to you from here on out won't be new to you probably probably you've heard this passage preached from many times but would you just lift up your heads today and look with an understanding of what god would say to us so i believe this passage has become so familiar to us uh, we don't even lift up our heads and look at it anymore we've heard it so many times But the hour is late and the need is great. Listen, folks, you and I must lift up our heads and look with understanding. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you'd speak to our hearts this morning in this passage as we consider the lateness of the hour and the greatness of the need. Lord, I pray that we would see with your eyes today and we'd be moved with your heart today. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. The hour is late and the need is great. I want you to notice, first off, what I want to give to you this morning. Notice the attention of the Savior in verse 36. The Bible says, but when he saw the multitudes, Jesus is well aware of, of the multitudes today. In Matthew 5, uh, the Lord said, And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. When he was said, his disciples came unto him. Oh, I read all through the scriptures, Jesus is seeing the multitudes. He's looking, he sees, he knows, he sees the multitudes. And, and when he looks out and he, he looks at the multitudes, you know what, I, I think about the, the, the physical needs that are represented in this room this morning. 
Uh, we could start now. We could start right here on the front row and go person by person and just go all through the, the congregation. And boy, the, the, the number of physical needs that would be represented this morning. Uh, probably different many physical needs as there are people sitting in this auditorium. Folks, do you realize when Jesus looks down on us today, he sees every need that you have. What a Savior. What a Savior that looks down and there's not a need, there's not a physical need that you have that Jesus doesn't know about. That's comforting to me, folks. He knows my needs. I don't have to tell anybody. I know my Savior knows about it. Before I even ask Him about it, He knows about it. I'm reminded of the time I was at the hospital with a, uh, with a need and, and uh, a financial need that he didn't know I had. Uh, mission director came in and, and said, you've not been paying enough uh, insurance premiums and, and the insurance company has contacted us and, and they want back payment and I'm laying in the hospital and, and don't even know if I'm going to live or not. And a pastor from North Carolina came to visit me and he's standing in the room and and my, this director leaves, and he steps out of the corner. He said, Brother Roland, what did that man say you owed? And I don't remember what it was, but I didn't have it. And uh, he reached in his pocket and pulled a check out, said, before I left, our church took up a check for you, and here's $2,700. Go pay your back payments, whatever's left. Just spend it on your wife and your kids. I didn't even know I had the need, and Jesus was standing in the room with the answer. Praise the Lord. Uh, and folks, I, that's a true story. <laughs> uh, I love that story. He knows my needs. He looks down and he sees. He sees every sinful need that we have. Folks, do you know, you realize this morning none of us have arrived yet? And when I say arrived, I mean that, that state of sinlessness. When none of us have gotten there. We won't get there till we see Jesus. But today we still live in a body that's uh, prone to wonder, prone to sin. First John 1 John 1.9 was written to the believer. Thank God. And he looks down and he knows us today. And the marvel of all marvels is he still loves us. All that I know about God, all I've been taught about His Word, and I'm still a sinful being, and He loves me anyway. He knows my physical needs. He knows the sinful needs, uh, the, 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 the things that I struggle with. Uh, he knows my spiritual needs. He knows the answer to all of it. And He's given it to us in His Word. And folks, I, I'm going to tell you, I... What are, what are the things that I'm confident in today? Uh, it won't take me long to tell you the things that I'm confident in. And what stands above all of them is God's Word. Amen. Oh, what a Savior we have. He looks down at the multitude. He not only sees the multitude, but He looks down and He sees our physical needs. He sees the sins that we struggle with. He knows our spiritual needs. And the Bible says He's moved with compassion. Oh, that's a great statement right there. Hey, look, I look down at the sinful needs of people and I think, what, why does God put up with us? And no compassion in that. But God looks down and He's moved with compassion. The Bible says He's moved with compassion on them because they fainted. The word fainted there means that they've become weary and tired, exhausted and fatigued. You ever felt like that? Wearied, tired, just exhausted and fatigued. Oh, God looks down on us and He sees all our needs and He knows that we're just faint. The Bible says he's moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. I thought about that. Look down and uh, 
you take a shepherd away from the sheep and they don't know what to do. They'll just scatter. Look on the fields, they're white already under harvest. Listen, folks, uh, the needs are all over the planet today. People are scattered all over the planet. They need a savior. And we've got one that looks down with compassion. They're scattered abroad as a sheep that has no shepherd. And the Lord looks down with compassion. How do you and I look at this planet today? Oh, it's a mess, isn't it? But when's the last time we looked at it with compassion for souls that need the Savior? Would you notice the second thing in verse 37? He says in verse 37, Then saith he to his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. I read that and I thought this. This is my thought. My thought and it's not original, but people need the Lord. People need the Lord. The harvest is plenteous, but the labors are few. Folks, the harvest, what is the harvest? The harvest is the people of the world. The people that are scattered all over the planet. That's the harvest. That's, that, that's the world of people that we live in today. Folks, you and I today need a world view. We need a community view. We do. We need a view of our community. We need to lift up our heads and see our community. But folks, we need to look beyond that as well. We need to look at the world. Jesus does. Folks, missions gives us an opportunity to look at the world with compassion. Uh, there are people around this world, there are places that you and I are never ever going to go. For whatever reason, be it financial, uh, be it just have no desire to go, be it there's no call to go. Oh, but God looks at the world and he looks at compassion and through missions, you and I can minister to the world. Alan read a uh, mission letter this morning from uh, South Africa, the Badgets, and mentioned that 22 people had been saved. Hey, that's missions, folks. You and I got a part of that. Uh, that's exciting to me. Uh, we're going to try to, we are going to um, put together a display. A couple years ago, we did the fish in the net, and it represented people all around the world been saved, missionaries that we support. Well, we're going to have another display this year that you're going to be able to see. I, in the last couple of years, Alan's at over 300 now, over 300 souls through our missionaries that have been saved. And we want you to be able to see that. Lift up, lift up. Yeah, I see the need. See what God can do. We need a worldview. Say not ye there yet four months, then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields. Listen, folks, lift up. And, and, and we are, you're, you're lifted up. You're looking around now. Many of you are looking at me. I think some of you are probably dozing off about right now. Hey, but look up. Lift your eyes up and look. Uh, but don't just look, look with an understanding of the need. Folks, the need is people need Jesus. He's the only answer. One of the main reasons we're a church. Jesus came into the world seeking to save sinners. He says, truly, the harvest truly is plenteous. Truly means seriously. Ser God's saying, seriously, folks, the harvest is plenteous. It's serious business. Souls are at, say, at stake. Um, people are dying and going to hell. People are dying and going to heaven. That's the good news. The bad news, there's still people not saved. It's serious business. He says the laborers, the workers are few. 
See, folks, the, the problem is not with the harvest. The problem is with the workers. Therein lies the problem. The harvest is plenteous. Jesus said, look up, look. There's a plenteous harvest there. It's serious business, but I need workers. I need those that are willing to go. The laborers are few. I don't think he's saying that there's few Christians, but the Christians that are willing to labor are few. I wrote this question down in my notes. Why is that? Why are the laborers few? What would you answer to that? Think about that in your mind. Why are there so few laborers? Not Christians, but laborers. There are Christians, and then there are Christian laborers. The laborers are few. Why is that? Folks, we got the mandate to go. Five times but, uh, uh, from the resurrection to the ascension, Jesus gave the great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Give it to one time would have been enough, but he gave it five times. We've got the mandate to go. What keeps us from going? I wrote a couple of things down. Is it apathy? We just don't care. Well, I don't know what it's going to take for us to get a burden for souls. It's not going to be me preaching about it. That's probably not going to do it. I think that might make us aware of the need, but do we care? And I, I don't think anybody would, would say, well, I don't care if souls are dying and going to hell. And I don't think any Christian would say that. But for some reason, there seems to be an apathy. Uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's just because we believe that the, the task is so big, there's really not much that we can do. Oh, yeah, we can do a lot, folks. We can do a lot. You got your corner that you live on. Work right there. That start right there. Is it unbelief? Do we really? But I, I've heard it said, well, souls just aren't being saved today. But that's not true. Souls are being saved. We had a prayer letter this morning. 22 souls in South Africa got saved. Praise the Lord. But do we really believe? That God will save souls? Uh, is it disobedience? God said go. But I don't want to. So what is it? Why are the workers so few? Listen folks, I can only answer that question in my own heart. And I'm asking you to ask it in your heart. Are you doing all that you can? Are, are our eyes lifted up? Are we looking on the fields that Jesus said are already white to harvest? Don't say that we've got four months to go. Time's running out. Look at the time that's passed that we're never going to get back. And so the attention of the Savior, the abundant harvest, I want you to notice in verse 38, look at the action that's required. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he'll send forth laborers into his harvest. Folks, right there's the action. He says to pray. You know, back before COVID, we were doing a special prayer meeting here at the church. I'm almost ashamed to even mention it. But we started that prayer meeting and we had a handful of people coming. We were meeting on Tuesday. We started seeing souls saved. I mean, we had a whole list of, of souls that got saved. I forget how many were on the list, but there were quite a number of souls that were being saved. Now, I think it was in direct response to the prayers of God's people. We came just to pray for lost souls, and we started seeing souls be saved. It, it, the action that is required, he says, pray, pray ye therefore, To who? The Lord. Folks, we have to stop right there for a minute. 
pray by. Who are we praying to? We're praying to the Lord. Uh, several Sundays ago, the young people got up here and and they started note, uh, quoting the names of the Lord. I, uh, I I say this a lot. The kids downstairs in Brother Tom's Sunday school class, man, they're getting a Bible education. They're up here naming the names of the Lord. I'm talking about the Hebrew names of the Lord and what they mean. And and uh, that, that's great. Man, I, I, Brother Tom was telling me about when he started that class, what he wanted to do. And I, I'm sort of thinking, well, that's, that's great. I said, but that, that's pretty high stuff for these kids. And then they're up here quoting his name. Praise the Lord. He's Jehovah Jireh. We know what that means, don't it? The Lord will provide. Yes. Pray to the Lord. Pray, the, pray to the one that will provide. He's Jehovah Tisdenu. He's the Lord, our righteousness. He's Jehovah Makedesh, the one who sanctifies. He's Jehovah Je uh, Shalom. He's our peace. He's Jehovah Rophe, the one who heals He's Jehovah Nisi. He's the Lord, our banner. He's Jehovah Roe, the Lord, our shepherd. Jehovah Shama, the Lord is there. That's who we pray to. I came across a sermon. Preacher uh, went through the names of the Lord. And I, I've done this. This is not a list that I have give you. That, that, there's so much out there. But uh, he was talking about the Lord and he says he's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. His office is manifold. His promise is sure. His life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. He's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. The heavens of heavens can't contain him, let alone a man explain him. You can't get him out of your mind. You can't get him off your hands. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. The Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. The witnesses couldn't get their testimonies to agree, and Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. He's always been, and he always be. He has no predecessor. He'll have no successor. There was nobody before him. There'll be nobody after him. You can't impeach him, and he's not going to resign. Amen. Folks, that's who we pray to. Amen. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest. That's who he is. So when he says pray, folks, re recognize, realize who we're praying to. Realize who we're asking to do these things. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest. God wants us to be involved in praying. He's the Lord of the harvest. He's God of the harvest. And he wants you and I to pray. I've had people say, well, if God knows all these things, why do we have to pray for him? Well, because he told us to. You, you ever had your kids say, well, well, why this or why that? Because I said so. <laughs> See, that's biblical. God, why do you want me to pray? Because I said so. <laughs> he wants us to get involved in the praying. He wants us to pray for workers. Pray to the Lord of the heart that he has sent forth workers into his harvest. I used to pray that a lot around here. And then God raised up all our young people and sent them off to other places. So, Lord, I won't pray that no more. <laughs> I think about, boy, if God, if you, if you just bring back all the workers that are serving uh, in different places, man, what a ministry we could have. Lord said, shut up. <laughs> just do what I told you to do. <laughs> It's God who has the power to change things, folks. That's who we pray to. So, such a familiar message. Pray that the Lord would send forth laborers. I'm just kidding, folks. If God would call another soul up out of this church and send them to labor in the field somewhere else, I would rejoice. 
I'm tell you what. Uh, I don't know anything that brings this preacher any more joy than see folks go out and serve Jesus Christ somewhere else. God has the power to change things. It's God who wants us to lift up our eyes and look. Say not ye there yet four months, then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields for they're white already to harvest. Right now. Not in four months. Right now, the fields are white. Well, I want to challenge you this week. Part of, my, part of my message is to get you to lift up your eyes this week. Oh, would you find somebody you could witness to this week? I don't know how many people. Did we get a count of how many people here today? I don't know. Maybe 50, 55. I don't know. Whatever. Oh, could 55 of us today find one soul this week to tell about Jesus? Lift up your eyes and look. The harvest is ripe. It's there. Look with understanding that the hour is late and the need is great. Can we find somebody to tell about Jesus? That's what I want to challenge you with this week. Maybe we'll have testimony time next Sunday morning and we can tell who we told about Jesus. I'm not asking who you won, but who did we tell about Jesus? Who did we give a track to? Right now, the fields are ready. Right now, souls are lost. Will you accept the challenge? Don't raise your hand, but will you accept the challenge? I'll find somebody this week to tell about Jesus Christ. I'd, I'd encourage you to do it on Monday. And then you'll think, man, i got a whole week to go. i can get another one and give out another track. And then Tuesday, and then, hey, just, hey, I challenge you, take one a week this week. Give one track a, a, a day out this week. That's not too big of a, a challenge. We can do it. Right now. Tomorrow may be too late. Time is gone. All we've got left is what's in front of us, folks. What's behind us is gone. Jeremiah 8.20. Oh, what a convicting verse. The harvest is past. Summer is ended. And we are not saved. How will we be involved? Oh, we're going into missions conference. I'm going to ask you to pray. I'm going to ask you to give. I'm going to ask us to go. And folks, I, I, listen, uh, if you think I'm pointing at you, there's four fingers pointing back at me. I want to be involved in it too. And then lastly, I want you to notice and this is tremendous. The Lord said to his disciples, Pray ye therefore the Lord, pray the Lord, that he would send forth laborers into the harvest. He wanted to get his disciples involved in praying that there'd be more laborers. Could we pray that? I'm not asking you to go. I'm just asking you. Jesus said, Will you pray? That, I'll send, that, that more laborers will go into the harvest field. Well, you know, usually when I do that, there's, a, there's always a catch. There's, there's a next part to this thing. Look over in Matthew chapter 10. He said, he said pray that there be more laborers that will go out into the harvest. And I believe they got involved in praying. Matthew chapter 10, look at verse 5. The availability of the disciples... These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, go, into the way, uh, go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any of the cities of uh, Samaritans, enter not. Now, you've got, you got to realize the dispensation. Jesus, uh, he sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and so he's still dealing with Israel. Verse 6, what he says, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 7, and as you go, preach. The availability of the disciples. He got them involved in praying. He got them involved in telling other people about the Lord. And then in verse 5 of chapter 10, these 12 Jesus sent forth. Listen, folks, there's, there, 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 there's something about getting involved in praying 
that makes us willing to do what we're praying about. I can't tell you how many, how many preachers I've heard preach say they preached on missions and they were trying to get other people to go. And then the Lord spoke to their heart about going and they resigned their churches and went to the mission field. There's something involved. There's something about getting involved in the ministry of praying for others. You start investing your time. You start investing your, your treasure. And listen, folks, where our treasure is, that's where our heart will be. And time is a treasure. You get involved in praying as God is instructing us to do. Listen, folks, that's where our treasure will be. And then our hearts are going to go to that place. That just makes sense to me. They got involved in praying, and then they were willing to go. Something about seeing the need. Lifting up your eyes and seeing the need. Folks, <clears throat> there's a difference in just lifting up our eyes and looking, and lifting up our eyes and looking with an understanding that the hour is late and the need is great. Lamentations 3 and verse 51, Mine eye affecteth my heart. When we begin to look up with an understanding of the need, of the lateness of the hour, I believe it will begin to affect our heart. And it will move us. And verse 7 says, And as you go, preach. What are we going to preach? I'm not going to preach politics. I'm about sick of that. Uh, that's a stench right there that's rolled up in all of our nostrils and it smells bad. I'm tired of politics. Uh, I'm not so interested in a social gospel. I'm not interested in church becoming a, 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 a social club. Hey, look, we had a great time Thursday. We did. But folks, that's not what it's all about. No, it's about seeing the need. It's about encouraging one another to serve Jesus Christ. And I want to do more of that. But as we go preach, my mind affecteth my heart. The hour's late. Need is great. What are we going to do about it? I hope you'll take my challenge this week. You know what, folks? We can randomly just go out and hand out tracts, and that's good. Listen, you can't give a tract to a wrong person. But I want you to lift up your eyes with an understanding of the need today and ask God, God, show me, show me who you would have me give this tract to. Show me who you would have me witness to this week. Well, I think it'd be great just to come back next week and just, just see what God has done. The hour's late, and the need is great. Will you lift up your eyes and look on the fields that are white right now under harvest? Let's pray. Our heads bowed and our eyes are closed. The hour's late and the need is great.